Once your band knows the goal, the approach that you're going to take to this particular song, it's far easier for each instrument to find its place within the context of that approach. It's important to recognize that you may not be the most skilled arranger in the group of band members that you have. Defer to someone that has a unique ability to gather the instruments together in a way that facilitates the song. Nonetheless, it's important to recognize that arranging a song is essentially a team approach. Everyone will have some contribution to make. You'll also realize along the way that not everyone needs to play all the time with reckless abandon. The goal of every equation in worship is one. The sum of every equation in worship is one, should we say. So I said, if there's six of us, how much do we all contribute towards the whole? Well, we each contribute one six. And I said, our natural tendency as musicians is to each try and contribute one. But then the equation equals six. And it sounds like six different things playing. You know, it's like a piano player who's used to playing on their own, maybe classically trained or whatever. And I mean, I'm telling you, all ten fingers are going. But when you're in a band context, often what's required from the keyboard player is something much simpler because of the fraction principle, because the goal at the end is one. So, you know, whether it's the drummer or the bass or whatever instrument you've got, I just say, uh, you know, if it starts getting really busy, I just sort of smile and say, guys, remember the fraction principle. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, the fraction principle, you know. Just a few other practical tips as you rehearse your band for the worship set. Take some time to loop a section of the song over and over. This gives each band member time to secure their role. Often, we don't give time to this very important exercise. If you continue to loop a section over and over, band members can find their place in the song, and usually they will apply it to the rest of the song as you move on. As well, take some time to rehearse the structure of the song, where you might do a quiet verse or where you might double the chorus. Then take some specific time to rehearse the vocals. Vocalists need time to work out their harmonies to find their unique place in the life of the song. As well, spend some time lingering in worship as a team together. It's important that we as a band move past the musical rudiments into that place of worship that we will be leading people into. When we find those kind of songs, what I love to try and do, especially with a new band, is stay there and, and, and find God in that, whatever that means. I guess what that means is playing in that, that space and maybe trying spontaneous stuff, things that aren't um, in the song, just so that we get used to playing together and concentrating on meeting with God rather than getting the song right. So once the, the basics of the song are in place, it's nice just to hang around there and see if we can find God. And once um, we find, the more we do that as a band, the more we, we practice seeking God as a band in music, the easier it is on Sunday morning, the better it is. So if, I haven't, if that hasn't happened in a rehearsal, I normally feel a little bit disappointed, so I'll try to get that in. After your rehearsal, continue to encourage everyone to memorize the songs. As well, you as the worship leader, take some time to rehearse the set over and over yourself. Finally, remember to listen to the Lord as to what His ongoing heart is for your particular gathering of worship.